Welcome to 5MI Truth or Myth, where you decide if someone is telling you a sexual truth or a sexual myth. This week's truth or myth concerns the clitoris. <clears throat> I've been making 5MI videos for nearly a year and a half, and I must admit, the present video by far has been the most difficult to research because of a general lack of scientific information about the clitoris. Now, don't get me wrong, the internet is filled full of information and definitions about the clitoris, but this information seems to be rooted in something other than reality. I say this not as a cynic, but as someone who has been a part of the spreading of misinformation about the clitoris. I, as well as it seems like most of the internet, have said that the nerve innervation within the clitoris is twice that of the nerve innervation within the penis. With there being 8,000 sensory nerve endings within the human clitoris and 4,000 nerve endings within the human penis. This statement is not completely false. Indeed, the human clitoris is rich with sensory nerve innervation, but this statement is not completely true either. The primary reference this statement comes from is a book titled The Classic Clitoris, Historic Contributions to Scientific Sexuality by the American psychiatrist Thomas Lowry. The exact numbers Lowry reports is 7,333 instead of 8,000 nerve endings for the clitoris, and 4,033 instead of 4,000 nerve endings for the penis when he is describing mm. cow and sheep clitorises and penises, not human clitorises and penises. My apologies to you again. I promise from this 5MI Weekly episode forward, I'll be more discerning mm -hmm. with my numbers and species. The fact of the matter is, an exhaustive review of the scientific research literature on the clitoris fails to yield a single study of the complete nerve innervation of the human clitoris. Simply put, information about the human clitoris that's rooted in reality is parse. You can demonstrate this yourself by hopping onto the internet and making a stop at Google Scholar. Google Scholar is a search engine that includes only scientific research studies. Type in the word penis at the Google Scholar prompt and look at how many studies this search yields. More than 600,000. Now type in the word clitoris and look at how many studies this search yields. Only about 60,000. What this means is scientists are 10 times more interested in studying penises than they are clitorises. With this being said, let's see if you can determine if this week's special guest is sexually ignorant and sharing a sexual myth or sexually knowledgeable and sharing a sexual truth about the anatomy of the human clitoris. Hello, my name is Scare E. Panda. And I'm here to share with you the following fact. The average length of an aroused human clitoris is about five inches. Indeed, the average length of the human adult aroused clitoris ranges from five to seven inches. And to fully understand the clitoris's length, we must recognize the clitoris's anatomy and function as being normal. First scientifically described in 1545 by the French anatomist Charles Estien in his book titled Dissection de Parte du Corps Humain, the clitoris's function was assumed as being associated with urinating. Various words like gadfly of Venus, amorous delsidu, little pillar, and bride have been used throughout history to refer to the clitoris, while the word clitoris itself was not widely used until the 17th century. 
having been derived from the Greek words meaning hill and to rub. But regardless of the words used to describe it or the anatomical discoveries about it, men have perceived it as something abnormal and needing to be removed. For example, the French surgical text, Chirurgie Francoise, made popular by Jacques Delacamps during the Renaissance, stated this about the clitoris. When women find themselves in the company of other women, or their clothes rub them while they walk, it erects like a male penis, and indeed they use it to play with other women, as their husbands would do. Thus, it should be cut off, as described by Aetius. Flavius Aetius was a Roman general born in 391 who wrote about clitorectomies being common practices dating back to at least the first century BCE. It wasn't until the mid-19th century that the clitoris's anatomy and function were more accurately described by the German anatomist George Cobalt. However, even with Cobalt's relatively accurate modern-day scientific descriptions, men of science and medicine continued to have the clitoris psychologically and physically removed. For example, the father of talk therapy and psychoanalysis, Sigmund Freud, argued in his 1905 book, Three Essays on the Theory of Sexuality, that female pleasure and orgasm should be centered on the vagina. And although Freud was aware many women experienced orgasms through the clitoris, he declared these orgasms as immature and infantile, and said, any woman who could not transfer her center of sensitivity from the clitoris to the vagina was frigid. The 19th century medical obstetrician Isaac Baker Brown took his disdain of the clitoris even further, defending the main thesis of his book titled The Curability of Certain Forms of Insanity, Epilepsy, Catalepsy, and Hysteria in Females. He argued, clitorectomies are justifiable operations that have been practiced from the time of Hippocrates and have been mentioned by all writers since that period again and again. Today, as mentioned, we have more than 60,000 scientific research studies on the clitoris. Yet most anatomy and physiology textbooks only have incomplete descriptions of the clitoris's functions and their anatomical descriptions of the clitoris are often only in comparison to the penises. Today, we scientifically know the sole purpose of the clitoris is for a woman's pleasure, and clitorectomies have no health benefits. Yet, there are still more than 200 million girls and women alive today who have had clitorectomies. Today, we scientifically know the clitoris is both an external as well as an internal organ. And without controversy, scientists agree the clitoris is composed of at least five parts. These five parts include the prepuce, which partially covers the glans clitoris, the glans clitoris, also called the head of the clitoris, and the body of the clitoris, which transitions from the glans clitoris. Each of these first three parts of the clitoris are external although this varies from one female to the next. For example, some females, either only the prepuce or only the glands, are visible parts of the clitoris to the naked eye. The remaining two parts of the clitoris are internal. The body of the clitoris transitions into the angle of the clitoris, and the angle of the clitoris transitions into the root of the clitoris. Note, there is a single body of the clitoris, and this transitions into two angles and two roots of the clitoris that surround the vagina. Part of what makes anatomy complex is that it seems like there are 30 different names for the same anatomical part. The anatomy of the clitoris is no exception to this complexity. For example, the clitoral roots are often referred to as corpus cavernosa and the ends of the corpus cavernosa are referred to as crura. And although debatable as being a part of the clitoris, several anatomists include the clitoral bulbs, also referred to as the vestibular bulbs, 
as being the sixth part of the clitoris. The clitoral bulbs transition from the angles of the clitoris and surround the vagina in even closer proximity than the clitoris's roots. One more thing needs to be said about the clitoris's anatomy and function. Today, we know the clitoris is a normal part of a woman's anatomy, with pleasure being its normal physiological function. Repeat. The clitoris is a normal part of a woman's anatomy, with pleasure being its normal physiological function. Repeat. The clitoris is a normal part of a woman's anatomy, with pleasure being its normal physiological function. Let's talk about the details of the clitoris's size. Because the clitoris is an erectile organ, physiological arousal and excitement affect the size of it. However, a woman's age, weight, height, or use of oral contraception have no effect on the clitoris's size. And the normally developed size of the clitoris, whether it be big or small, fat or thin, has no effect on the potential for a woman to orgasm or the quality of her orgasms. The diameter of the glands ranges between three and eight millimeters. The clitoral body ranges between one and three centimeters and the clitoral roots range between 12 and 15 centimeters in length. Adding these numbers together results in an average size clitoris between 12.7 and 17.8 centimeters or five to seven inches in length. So now you know, although often hidden and psychologically and physically suppressed, the clitoris remains the center of a woman's pleasure with its size and power being greater than what most people realize. Go share this newfound knowledge about the clitoris and be a part of the fight against sexual ignorance.